So first job is to swap the pulley. Uh, this is the old pulley we've just taken off. Uh, you can see it's got a timing mark on it. When we remove the cylinder head to fit the decompression plate, we'll be putting a new mark on the new pulley. Um, sometimes, as it's a bit close, you'll need to slacken the steering rack off on the four bolts and lift it up slightly to get the pulley on. And you should have about 10 millimeters clearance between the front of the pulley and steering rack. Um, sometimes you see on older cars, this one's just had a relatively new engine in it, the uh, engine mounts kind of bias forwards and are a bit twisted. So to get the clearance required on the pulley, if you've got say less than eight mil, you'll need to put new engine mounts on that are straight and not twisted forwards. And there is a little bit of adjustment if you slacken off the engine mounts uh, and the gearbox mount, you can push the whole engine back slightly to gain a bit more clearance, but usually they'll fit without any problems. Uh, so next thing is to take the head off. So we just swapped the front pulley. This has got some water on it from removing the head, which we'll see in a minute. This is easier to do if you remove the two bolts each end, these two bolts on the steering rack. Two bolts here, two bolts the other end, and then you can move the rack out of the way to get more clearance to push the pulley on, because the pulley is slightly deeper than the original pulley, and that should have about eight millimeters clearance on the rack uh, when it's back in position. Uh, straightforward replacement for the original pulley, uses the same seal. There's a seal in the kit to replace the one that's in your current rocker, current tire and cover. And now we're onto the engine. We've got the head removed. This is a recently rebuilt engine, so the surfaces are really good. I'm just going to clean that up with a stone before we refit it with the decompression plate. This is the cylinder head. Again, this is slightly ported. Um, I think it's the original size exhaust valve, but a slightly larger inlet. I'm uh, just going to give that a clean up with a stone and refit that with the decompression plate. So that is a pan gasket on first, the decompression plate, stainless steel shim, and second gasket on top. And that's what we use to drop compression ratio. Now I'll just put the head back on. So we have the cylinder head back on, retorqued and tap it set. Um, I've got the charger on, so the charger just drops on um, because it's slotted, you can put the studs and the washers on the manifold face, those four that are normally uh, holding the manifold on and then drop it down from above and then just tighten those up. So that's in place. <clears throat> We've got the connection to the brake servo, which comes out the side of the supercharger here. Uh, we've got another port, which is closed off at the moment. This is for vacuum and or boost gauge. Uh, depending on what type of distributor you've got, whether you've got a boost gauge. Uh, throttle cable you can see is connected here. So this is the um, section that's supplied in the kit which holds the existing cable. So your old cable, put this plastic end on it and then it's held in place with this bracket. Um, there's a cable nipple there, brass one with a um, little grub screw to hold it in place. And then the throttle return spring to the front of the supercharger. The radiator's been angled forward slightly with these spacers to give a little bit more room on the top hose. Depending on your radiator, sometimes this is necessary, especially the aluminium ones seem to be much tighter than the original ones uh, in this area. Uh, I think where the hose comes out further, whereas the original one is, is much tighter. And also we've changed the bottom hose from the uh, original early type uh, which has this s-bend in it uh, the later type doesn't have the s-bend but it is a bit long so usually you can cut this section off but because it comes out and down to this section um, it's much straighter so this s-bend doesn't get in the way of the belt so that's been swapped over uh, so you can see it just comes straight out from the water pump there and goes down to the radiator just gives clearance on the belt uh, so we've got half inch 20 mil or so on the belt there 
uh, the tensioner you can see is it's just swung against the belt um, if you're running a plastic fan sometimes it depends on the water pump but you can see we've added a 10 mil aluminium spacer there with some slightly longer bolts sometimes that's not necessary the flanges on the water pump seem to vary where they're pressed on it's a press fit flange which holds the pulley and the fan sometimes they give more clearance sometimes give less clearance um, doesn't necessarily need all of that clearance you can see that there's again half an inch clearance on the the fan there the fan will pull forwards uh, when it turns so it will move away from the belt uh, but it's just making sure we've got the necessary clearance for everything um, around the engine really uh, so let's uh, start that up so all back together just about to put it on the rolling road you can see now we've got the um, tubes connected up for the charge cooler charge cooler radiator is there charge cooler pump is there charge cooler reservoir is there and these pink hoses are just the silicon hose that's got um, antifreeze in it uh, so we've replaced the metal hose on the top with just a rubber hose which goes to the heater just because the metal hose gets in the way and it's a pre-bent pre shape difficult to manage um, I think that is everything I'll just start it up so you can hear it <laughs> 